Alrighty, <laughs> yo, what is up, knights? Aegis Rick here, back with episode 3 of DFO Crash, this time on my Dragon Knight. And yes, this is the third video of the series, the third knight subclass I've shown off, so you guys can probably predict what the fourth one is going to be. But hey, just don't get used to the predictable nature, but I've got to, you know, I've got to cover the knights, guys, because they are just a namesake to this channel, you know, to my philosophy and gaming in general. I love knight characters, and this character... I gotta say guys, she's gotta be among one of the best knight classes in this game hands down. So let me tell you guys some pros and cons of this class and why I feel like this class is so good in this game. Alrighty guys, pros and cons about the Dragon Knight. First and foremost guys, she has straight up the best air combat in DFO. She has a lot of different skills which function differently whether they're casted on the ground or in the air, and she has several means of popping into the air, maneuvering, and diving back down onto the ground. Now on top of getting all of these air variations of skills, she also gets variations on skills depending on whether or not you've already summoned your dragon partner Ostra, and that dragon can be simultaneously summoned during the animation of her other skills. Both of these things contribute to an extremely fluid experience of you transitioning to and from the air all the while commanding your dragon and swinging your sword. It's honestly amazing and if I was going to give a recommendation for anyone to try out Knight, Dragon Knight would absolutely be my choice. Alright on to her cons and her biggest problem that I have found is that because she's so bursty and she can simultaneously cast huge skills, I often find myself just waiting for my my rotation to come back with little to do in the interim. She has very big cooldown problems. Secondly, if you make a mistake in casting a skill like for instance Meteor Buster without Ostra Summoned, you can be severely punished as you are stuck in animation. Makes me kind of wish that there was some kind of cancel system in those situations. And lastly guys, and I don't know if this is a gear thing or whatever, but I find that my Dragonite guzzles a ton of MP. Now obviously you can just drink Canna's Milk to recover your MP, but in certain situations like raids, this is just a problem that other characters don't have to deal with and it might cause some problems when you're trying to do damage rotations. Alrighty guys so now you guys can maybe see the attitude that I have for this character. I really love this character and it really is one of the knights that I would say okay you know if I'm trying to sell somebody on the knight character I, I would sell them on this character. Uh, guys, I was going to go into 2 plus 2, but I figured, you know what, we've done 2 plus 2 enough, and I got a lot of other content that I'm doing on characters like this. So, this character right here, you guys can see her gear. She basically stopped after Fiend Wars. I did do a little bit of Prey Guide mode to get her Black Sky, but just decided to settle for getting a Legendary set on her right side, and I think she's honestly very strong as is, you know. Uh, but guys, this is a character I've chosen to do the Dark Dimension, and I'm not going to be showing this off on pretty much any other character, so I do want to show off what the Dark Dimension is, and I want to also mention that, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people, myself included, actually, kind of sleep on the Dark Dimension. There are some other uses aside from the Neo Legendaries, which... Uh, that is the primary reason you do this dungeon, guys. This is where you farm your Neo Legendaries. If you guys go check to this NPC right here, you can purchase one of the pieces, either the top, bracelet, or the earring, to be your Neo Legendary. Now, the weird thing is uh, that these Neo Legendaries, they are strong on their own. They will buff up your set effect. But what makes them a Neo Legendary is actually you upgrading them into an epic product of wisdom. And the unfortunate thing is... Uh, these Dark Dimension Essences are very hard to farm. I'll say the Fragments are not that hard to farm. You will be able to get the Bracelet or whatever piece you're going for pretty quickly. But the recipe is going to take you a lot longer. And unfortunately, this recipe is not 100%. This is the main reason why people say doing this Dark Dimension is not worth it at the time. They might adjust this later. But as it exists currently, at least getting this shouldn't be too difficult. It'll take you a couple uh, weeks, I would say. And then, you know, it's just trying to hope that you can upgrade that into the Neo uh, product of Wisdom to make it its proper version. But let me explain how this area works here, guys. And I, I do like the concept. Uh, first and foremost, what you have access to every single day is this dungeon right here called the Traces of the Dark Miscreation. And uh, I'm going to run that here, but the other thing you got to know is that this is a special area, which is why I had to change channels, which allows you to select up to three characters on your account to help you in this dungeon. And you can literally select anybody, uh, and if you don't have any strong characters, you can, in fact, use some DFO Elite pre-made characters, which can uh, help assist you. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely beneficial to bring your strongest alts that you have on your account, as well as a strong satyr 
to uh, kind of help you in this dungeon. And essentially what you can do if you're, your alts are strong enough, this dungeon is actually not that difficult. And you'll see right here, I can kind of just leave my APCs to their own devices and they can pretty much carry me completely in this dungeon, which is kind of, it's a cool concept, but also uh, it's, it loses its appeal pretty dang quickly. I mean, we're going to kill this guy right here pretty dang fast. And then he's going to do an annoying gimmick attack, which is completely and utterly too easy to avoid. Just kind of wasting our time at this point. Uh, but yeah, no, these dungeons shouldn't take you more than a minute. I was just kind of explaining a little bit. But these dungeons are very quick, especially if you have a strong character to bring it with, uh, bring into it. Um, it does drop time stones off the mini bosses, just like 2 plus 2 does. The boss itself also has a chance of dropping an epic, which I have indeed gotten an epic off of this guy before. So I do want to mention it's not just a myth out here. Uh, these guys are being so annoying right now. And here you guys can see, here's the dimensional fragments that you guys can see um, dropping off of the boss. And this is something, like I said, you have access to this dungeon every single day. You can use your entire FP bar into here if you want. Uh, and this is how you get your Neo Legendary, basically, base equipment. You farm the Traces of Dark Dimension until you get a bunch of fragments. And at Santorini here, you can just buy them from the NPC. And that, that's kind of like the starting point of your Neo Legendaries. Um, it has been said, you know, that the Neo Legendaries for your accessories, for instance, are stronger than the upgraded uh, elemental set that you can get uh, from upgrading from your Prey accessories. So this is a very, very strong piece of gear, and it makes your accessory sets very strong as well. So it is in your best interest to get this. The problem is, like I said earlier, the Neo Product of Wisdom is going to be the real kicker here. Farming this is just a, a matter of slogging through this. This is not a difficult grind at all. Especially for this type of character, which is kind of weird because you would figure to at least have a little bit of challenge to it. But unfortunately, when you bring your alts into it like this, it makes it just brain dead easy. And here you can see right here, kill them pretty quick. And depending on which boss you get can determine how fast your clearance times are going to look like. But yeah, I'm not going to run this too many times because I want to showcase the Dragon Knight. But just know this is where you farm that. You just keep doing that. Using your whole FP bar, depending on what your layout can be, will expend all of your FP very, very quickly. Now, the one other dungeon that I'm going to mention uh, is the Dark Miscreations Garden. And that dungeon is available only on Friday, Saturday, and Sundays on all even hours of the day if you live on the Pacific. It'd be, I think it's all odd hours of the days uh, on the East Coast. But anyway, basically every two hours you will have access to this dungeon, but only for 10 minutes. And I do highly suggest this dungeon. And the reason why, if you guys look at the bottom left here, you do get progression reward boxes. So for those three days, basically you get rewarded every time you go up the floor. Uh, and those are very good. You get these card albums like this. You get like rare and unique cards out of them. Best in slot cards are available. So it's something that, I, honestly guys, yes, Dark Dimension may not be something you're interested in at all. Neo Legendaries, you don't care about them at all. You have epics. But this dungeon right here is not optional. I'm saying it is a weekly you have to do. And it, if only for this reason alone. Okay, unique cards are something I'm definitely going to recommend. Uh, it is a lot harder than what the dungeon I was just showing, but I do want to mention that both of those dungeons are something I'm doing on this character, and I do think it is worthwhile at least to do those dungeons. You know, at least clear a few floors just to get them over with because uh, it is worthwhile. Alrighty, guys. Now, I am currently in the Prey Isis Raid channel, and I do think uh, this is some content that I won't be able to show off very much because I'm not really farming this on very many characters, but I do want to showcase a little bit of the Prey solo mode. And Guys, Prey and Prey Raid, I'm doing the solo mode now. You can do Prey Guide mode, which is this mode, or you can do Prey Raid mode. And I do think these are things that are still worthwhile today. And the reason why is that you have the ability to upgrade your level 95 uh, best in slots, those being Fiend War and Prey Gear, into level 100 cap gear. And in particular, if you want to get the Synchro set, which is the sub-equipment set, then you'll have to have a Prey sub-equipment set. And this is a fine way to get it, just kind of guaranteed if you're strong enough to do it. It also gives me an opportunity to show off a little bit more of the Dragonite without having everybody just hard carry me. But anyway, guys, uh, Dragon Knight is an awesome character, and I haven't really gotten to show it off very much, but the reason why is that she has some awesome combos. She has the ability to 
pop into the air as well as simultaneously cast her dragons, something I mentioned in pros and cons. And it's those two things that are done so fluidly and so perfectly that kind of demonstrate why this character is so uh, well designed in my opinion. She has a, a lot of different skills that will put her into the air. You know, the Dragon Smash, the skill will put her into the air. Hell, you can even use the back step if you want to, to back step into the air and be able to get access to the aerial versions right out of the way just by using the back step. So back step is really important. Um, and you de definitely want to cast aerial versions of some of these skills. Like for instance, uh, this one right here, which is the uh, spinning raid, it's what I usually use to get down onto the ground. Using it on the ground does this long animation, but you don't necessarily want that. You want the high, very quick burst damage, so in that case, you always want to cast that skill in the air whenever you have the opportunity. And sometimes the best opportunity is just simply when you're on the ground. Uh, combos like that, you know, where I was able to shoot the dragon off, and then while I was in the air, come back down with the, you know, other strong strong dragon skill uh, which casted a different version just because my dragon was already summoned uh, same thing with this skill right here oh, oh let me get let me get this right here there you go uh, same thing with that skill right there it has a different version if Astro was already summoned before you casted the skill so you know all of these things are just you know ways for you to abuse this character systems so one thing I really hate about prey raid guys is is the waiting around it's like Man, I wish there was a way for raid leaders to accelerate this process because it is so dumb to just stand here for like a good 30 seconds. But yeah, guys, aside from the fluid gameplay, I mean, the other benefits that this character has that, you know, I might not have brought up. She is a fixed damage character, so relatively speaking, you know, this is the first fixed damage character I've shown off. Uh, but yeah, relatively speaking, she's going to be a lot easier to gear than characters like the Paladin and the... Uh, uh, the EK, so, you know, if that's something that you're worried about, well, you know, don't be. You can access the the fun aspect. Oh, man, I just got canceled there. Uh, you can access the fun, fun parts about this character relatively easily, you know. You can uh, get dodged like that. Okay, get me out of here. You can access this character pretty much uh, at no no charge, you know. It's pretty cheap to, to gear this character out, and you can... Not, you know, like Paladin is a character where I think the getting to that point is is hard, and I don't think you're going to have as much fun with the character until you're really strong. This character is pretty much strong right out of the bat. You just have to invest a little bit in the gear, get your refinement, and then you're going to start kicking ass. So uh, that's yet another reason why I, I'd recommend this character just as a newbie getting into Knights is that fluid gameplay, fixed damage character, really easy to get into just how this character feels right away so a lot of the times when you're fighting against bosses you're going to be using the install type skills of Ostra. you guys can see right here you install Ostra onto the ground you have access to a lot of his skills that um, kind of leave him stationary unfortunately uh, a lot of the bosses nowadays move around a lot so hitting all of your hits with it is a little bit risky you know sometimes you kind of throw it out there and you, you won't uh, you'll miss most of your damage, but at least Astro will be summoned so that you have access to the skills that you generally want to cast while he's summoned. So at least you have that going for you. We're going to just go ahead and skip Battlegrounds and just jump into Isis. So, you know, having him summoned, even while it's not hitting anything, when you have, like, the, the Breath of the Storm out or something like that, um, it's always a good thing to have him out there because there are a lot of skills that you'd rather him out there like this one right here definitely don't want to and you see how f fluid that that movement was interrupting him there now unfortunately this character does suffer a little bit from burst itis i guess you could say basically running out of skills because her burst rotation is so fast she can like i said simultaneously cast most of all of her skills if she wanted to so she does kind of have that issue where she can run out of skills really quickly if uh okay she's going to try to move there okay she's quick rebound so luckily the easiest one to dodge here in guide mode so yeah she'll just suffer from having too many uh burst moves used right back to back but guys we're gonna try a unique rotation here let's see how this kind of works out here come back down into the ground pop into the air get oh i wanted to get the casted version and or man 
And there you go. Okay. I wanted to get the other version, but it doesn't really matter. Got most of our skills off. That's the important thing. So, uh, somebody else's rotation in that situation would have been different, and basically we would have done the same thing. It's just that's how fluid this character is. That's how viable this character is. That, you know, it's not really important how the rotation looks. Uh, it's just the fact that you can have different rotations. I do appreciate that about this character. Oof. I do appreciate that about this character where you don't always have to do the same rotation. And I feel like a lot of characters kind of suffer from that problem where they always do the same exact rotation every single time they have an opportunity. Why? Because it's the most optimal. Well, this character, you know, you have a lot of leeway with what you can cancel. You know, there's a little bit more fluidity when you cast certain skills in certain situations. But there are a lot of situations... A lot of things that will put you into those situations. For instance, there's a lot of skills that will pop you into the air if you need the aerial version. There's a lot of skills that can be used to uh, cast Astra if you want to use a version that uh, is without Astra uh, in it. You know, there's just a lot of different ways, and that way uh, it makes it uh, very you know unique to every player. You know, no two Dragonites are going to be alike when it comes to that. But guys, we're going to go ahead and jump into some more. Uh, relevant content it is going to be unique because i haven't shown this off yet but it's still going to be pretty easy now there is still reason uh, obviously to do the prey raid i discussed that but there is much more important reasons i think or maybe relevant reasons is the ditto epic if you're farming epics uh, you definitely need to be running oculus as soon as you can because the ditto epic will allow you to finish that up so i, I think prey as well as the Oculus is something that this character is going to be doing if you haven't gotten your um, Ditto Epic yet. And if you're in the process of farming your uh, Prey Gear, that's yet two different reasons why you farm this kind of content. But guys, uh, getting my different versions off here. Man, I love the aerial combat here. And, okay. So we'll do get some hits off on that this boss does move around a lot so don't want to waste too much of my <laughs> no range skills and this boss is going to be kind of tough if you let her move around too much so i'm going to go ahead and just shoot some going two way this up. oh that's a mistake that's a mistake player Fortunately, he didn't have very many skills left here, but... And got this version. Good. Yeah, I almost never like casting this skill, the Meteor Buster, without having Astra out, out, up. There's, like, almost no reason why I'd cast that skill otherwise. So. Got the door here. Popping into the air with the Ascent. That is one other special thing about this skill is the Dragon Wing... Uh, can be used to basically uh, cancel your animations. You know, skills that have like a little bit of after aftercast delay. You can use the aftercast delay, and if you hit the Dragon Wings button, it will actually just pop you into the air at the end of the animation. There's the slow ass. Never use that animation if I have an option. So, um, so yeah, that's another thing about Dragon Wings that you might not know about is that at the end of animations, you can use it like this to pop into the air automatically. Uh, oh shit. Um, used right there, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but uh, the cool thing about Summon Astra, you know, the skill that is mapped to my W key right now, cool thing about that skill is that it actually provides you super armor. And because Astra is an independent uh, type of summon, uh, which you can cast at any time, uh, you can actually cast it while you're getting comboed. So the cool thing is Summon Astra will give you super armor. And if you're getting comboed, you can actually use it to give yourself temporary super armor while you're getting comboed. So that's yet another type of small nuance that you might see people using if they're getting hit by something. Oh, well, let me just interrupt you with Summon Astra. I'll kill you, but then I'll also get super armor if I can't manage to kill you, which is really cool. Um, just goes to show how, how useful Ostra is. In comparison, you know, I've made this comparison before. You look at characters like the Enchantress who also have a miniature summoning type of system. And it's so, it's so night and day how much more fluid this one is in comparison to that. It's just like, damn, I wish uh, the bear on uh, Enchantress was anything close to what Ostra can do here. You see me popping into the air after that, after cast delay of that skill. Just going to show that you can pop into the air pretty much in any situation just to get aerial versions of skills 
Although some skills can naturally pop you into the air anyway, so just throwing that out there. Don't always have to rely on the dragon wings. Ooh, shit. I'm going to give you one of these. I'm in the air anyway. You'll never be able to hit me, dude. Screw it. Use it to it. Um, I do say that this is also because of the fact that it has so many variations of skills and stuff. It is one of the best aerial combat skills in the game. There are a few of them. I will mention that. There are a few of them. Classes like Female Spitfire can also play into the air. Which, to some extent, not really. Uh, you know, some classes have aerial versions of skill. Rogue is another example. But nobody ever reaches the level of this character. And nobody ever intentionally pops into the air like this character does. Nobody has the air mobility that this character does. It's just, you're not going to see it on any other characters. It's just pretty much black and white. The only thing that can come even slightly close is female spit because most of her skills' best versions are casted in the air. But that's, you know, that's to say nothing about the deliberate nature. Oh, I just got canceled there. The deliberate nature of so many of this character's skills. Uh, being able to pop her into the air and get aerial versions that way. I mean, you really cannot undersell that that part of this character. That this character was designed from the ground up to be really good at being able to do that. So, taking care of Ezra right here. I don't know why I didn't stand on that. But, uh, dude, let me tell you. Guide mode really makes your brain dead, man. Let me tell you right now. Give myself the super armor. And you know what? I'm going to stand right right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy good. But anyway, guys. I don't know how often I'll show that off because I'm not doing that. Uh, this content on very many characters. This character just so happens to be in that sweet spot where she's strong enough to do everything in terms of 2 plus 2. She can do Oculus parties and stuff like that. You know, I've optimized her well enough. But I, I do like doing solo content at the very least if I'm not able to join any pubs or anything like that. Because, you know, it's slowly but surely getting myself to 100 epics eventually. I think the end game goal is what I'm trying to do here is to get myself a Neo accessory set. Maybe get myself a Synchro sub equipment set and then work my way towards getting some random epics or maybe crafting an epic here uh, for the upgraded mother nature set but i'm not sure yet you know this is one of those things that i have too many characters down the line that i'm you know dumping resources into so i'm kind of going the farming route on this character Alrighty, guys now we currently find ourselves here in the harlem area of dfo and we're gonna go ahead and jump into the disaster sector three now i showed this off a little bit on my paladin and my paladin is, you know, a really strong character. This character is also relatively strong. She's obviously strong enough to do this kind of content. But the thing about it is you want to have a lot of characters that can do this content, but they got to be, you know, it's not just enough to be strong to do this content. You got to be a good character for it. You got to have good AoEs. You got to have good cooldown. You got to have good mobility. Uh, and this character, I would say, fits the bill pretty dang well. She is a very good character for this dungeon, mostly because she has great AoE. You know, I, I, I did complain a little bit about her cooldown situation where she's kind of just swiddling her thumbs waiting for big cooldowns. But she has, the, the, the cooldowns that she does have are uh, going to be pretty much good enough to clear the room completely. You guys can see right here, just missed one guy and you have a good move to kind of take him out. You know, I already have my Breath of Storm back up. And because we're strong enough now nowadays to basically make short work of this content, if you're quick about it, you can actually just completely and utterly decimate most of these rooms on top of the aoe though you need to have some good mobility and i'd say this character has that as well she has aerial mobility you know if if you don't have any cooldowns which that rare situation i just didn't have anything well at least you have your two-way here and just gonna wait for cooldowns and i already got skill back up and this character i think is really strong for this area you guys can see here just a short work of most of these guys and you know you have just gonna Go this way, and then let's just use the dragon sword again. I don't know how this guy's still living, but here you go. Eat that. So yeah, I mean, I think it's a pr relatively good kit of skills for it. You gotta have the mobility, you gotta have the AoE, and because you need so much FP, you know, you need at least a couple characters that can do this really well. And I think Dragonite definitely fits the bill. Um, you know, obviously if I was a little bit stronger, these guys just go down a lot easier, but... You know, just utilize your cooldowns in in good si situations, in good positions, and you're going to be pretty much solid. 
One other thing that I don't remember when they changed this, but you do now have the ability to change directions with your Breath of the Storm as well as the Dragon Sortie here. Uh, both of those skills can be changed directions, which uh, is definitely a much asked for change. I've been asking for that for a while because it's so annoying when you pass over a guy, you have to double back, which takes a whole bunch of extra time. But now you don't have that problem nearly as much, so you just kind of turn it around if you have to. Which doesn't happen very often now the other cool thing about uh, and why i mentioned that the aerial combat is really good on this character is because the room to room transitions right that is something that on most characters you don't necessarily have to think about it because you always spawn in standing on the ground it doesn't matter if you jump into a door or not you're just kind of standing on the ground when you spawn into the next room on dragon knight there is a consideration whether or not you're standing in or or flying in the air or standing on the ground. You guys can see, if I jump into a door, I show up standing in the room. But if I fly into a door, I'm still flying when I enter the room. And that is a huge consideration when you're doing this kind of content because all of a sudden, you know, it's in your best interest. Am I flying on a dragon when I go into the next room or do I want to be standing on the ground? And that's kind of like a small nuance thing that maybe you're not, you don't pay attention to, to very much on other characters, but this character, if I want to stand on the ground, I have to cancel my flying ability first. And that's, you know, it could be a good or bad thing. Either way, you know, maybe you're out of dashes. And so you don't want to be flying when you go into the next room. So what you do is you, you, know, you get close to the door and you cancel it. So you see I'm standing on the ground now. Or, you know, you know you're flying on the dragon. You go into the next room and you'll be still flying on the dragon when you get to the next room. So this is why I keep saying, guys, I keep saying this character is the best aerial combat character because... You can abuse that. You can abuse the fact that you're flying in the air. You can abuse the fact that, you know, the, the dragon wing can give you the aerial mobility and the aerial flying ability. Uh, and you can abuse that by using aerial moves right when you load into into the next room. Alrighty, guys, I have found myself here at the chess town and I didn't want to show off this video or this content today because I've already ran it today. Uh, but I am going to show it off anyways because I just kind of looked back at the footage and realized, man, I haven't shown off any difficult content <laughs> yet. And I want to showcase a little bit of 2 plus 2 because I showed off my gear a little bit before earlier. But you guys can see this is the start of characters who are on my account who are strong but not necessarily like full epic out. And you guys can see I did go into this dungeon onto the normal difficulty, which is what I recommend if you're at this point. You know, you don't always have to be, you know, hyper geared to do... Uh, you know the two plus two you can be in your legendary gears or you can be in your partial fiend war partial upgraded gear and it will be perfectly fine on the normal difficulty and don't feel bad for doing the normal difficulty either that's another thing that you know oh i want to try to get into expert as soon as possible not a big deal if you're running on normal i will say like uh i i think it's better to get faster runs in my situation since i'm running so many characters through here it's so much more important to get faster runs than it is to get more efficient runs. I do think Expert does drop epics more often, but I've gotten plenty of epics here on the normal difficulty. So don't don't think just because it's normal, it's 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 not uh, worthwhile to do. It's definitely worthwhile to do. Um, you guys can see here. Oh shit! He he dodged me. Hit him here. Nice. Okay. Um, Definitely worthwhile to do and something you should strive for. Now, personally, I have found that I'm trying to shoot for around a minute and a half times. You know, if you're taking anything more than, I'd say, two minutes to do 2 plus 2, I'd say you're probably not strong enough to do 2 plus 2 yet. And you have to optimize your gear more. Legendaries will get you to that point. I think two minutes will get you, you know, optimized legendary set will get you to under two minutes. Uh, and, you know, aside from that, you playing well and stuff like that is going to take you a long way. So I definitely think that it's possible to get uh, that with, you know, this level of gear. I'm obviously doing it pretty easily. Uh, and fixed damage characters, uh, obviously, like we already know, fixed damage characters have it a little bit easier. But just suffice to say, try to shoot for around two minutes on your two plus two times and you're going to be pretty much solid. This character, no problem whatsoever on that. Get my back step bridge on that skill. You guys can see I'm also doing a ton of damage with my first and second awakening chain. Get out of there. Sometimes got to use the dragon wing for evasive purposes. Not just using your flying all the time. And nice. Okay, pretty quick time right here. 
And the glass breaks on the right. I didn't even notice that the glass breaks on the right there. Now, this video has been all over the place. I'm gonna try to showcase you guys content, like all the content that 100 Cap has to offer that's still relevant, you know? It's still relevant. All the stuff I'm showing off is still relevant. I do it, it's not just me doing it for the video. I'm doing it because, uh, you know, it's actually useful for, for the account to, to do that content still. Uh, so what I just showed today, uh, in terms of like, uh, what the hell did I show today? Uh, Oculus guide mode, the prey guide mode, even the fiend war guide mode, which I am not doing on this character. But yeah, all those things are still useful to this day uh, for various reasons. Uh, obviously, two plus two, though. Get used to that. But oh shit, forgot the event item. No, <laughs> fuck, fuck it. I already got the paint that he pet anyway. Huge damage with the two A right there. That is the one annoying thing. It is like a very different from the Paladin 2A that you guys just saw. Uh, this one has most of her damage on the back end. So uh, you're definitely going to have to plan your skills out a little bit better than... Uh, it, it, it's going to be a lot harder to time those counter hits is what I'm getting at. But it doesn't really matter because it's also one of the biggest burst moves ever. And you can use it uh, preemptively. Uh, like for instance, I can use it right when I spawn into the room and pretty much hit him when he gets out of it so you know maybe maybe i wasn't able to sell you on this character but i honestly guys i really do believe that if, I, if i'm gonna sell you on night it's gonna be here on this character unfortunately i don't think the chaos the last night i had to show off is gonna have that same kind of impact it might but I, i'm just telling you right now that in terms of the a team working on on classes this this class is definitely uh w was worked on by the a team <laughs> that's for damn sure uh you know I remember when Paladin came out, obviously I was going to main Paladin first, but when the Paladin came out, Dragonite came out at the same time, and it just felt like Paladin got shafted in terms of the amount of effort that they put onto the character. So because they probably put it into this character, which was just so much better designed and released at the same time. But anyway guys, thanks for watching. There's a little bit of Dragon Knight action. In the next video, guys, we're going to be covering the chaos, and hopefully I can paint her in a good light, although it's not going to be as bright as it is with the Dragonite. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you tonight. Later.